Welcome to another episode of Reason Explained. Today, we are analyzing the Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. This is a very powerful synth device that lets you create virtually any sound from the ground up. So let's begin. The top section of Thor is where you can find your basic device functions. On the left, you have your pitch and mod wheels, followed by your three keyboard mode options, polyphony settings, and portamento adjustment. Last, you have your rotary and button knobs. These are assignable to any function within the programmer matrix. We will dive into this later on in the video. Now, let's see what's under the hood and click the show programmer button. At first look, this can be quite overwhelming. Just realize that Propeller Head puts in all kinds of little indicators throughout their devices to help you understand what is going on. Thor is no different. If you look closely, you will notice that all these lines with arrows show the signal flow through the device. This is huge as you can use it as a starting point when developing your signal. We are going to start in the upper left corner of the programmer. Here you can run three separate oscillators. As you can see, you have six different oscillator types to choose from. This gives you 120 different oscillator combinations. The faders on the left can set how one oscillator influences another. Now, let's follow their signal path. Note that all three move to the mixer first. Your balance knob mixes oscillators 1 and 2. The first fader controls the volume of oscillators 1 and 2. The second fader controls the level of oscillator 3. Moving on, you will notice that the signal is sent in two directions from the mixer. We are going to follow the downward path first. As you can see, by selecting buttons 1, 2, or 3, you can send your signal into filter 2. Clicking the arrow in the upper left gives you four different filter types to choose from. Following the signal, you will have to click this arrow to send it to the amp. Now let's go back to the mixer to follow the upper split of the signal. This portion of the signal is sent to the filter 1 section. Again, you have four different filter types to choose from. Moving on from filter 1, the signal moves into the wave shaper distortion section. Here, you have nine types of distortion that can further shape your sound. To activate, simply click the shaper button here. Out of the shaper, you will notice that you can send the signal in two directions. Sending it left will send it on its way to the filter 2 section. Sending it right will send it to the amp section. This can be seen by looking at the amp section large arrow that is coming out of it. It has six lines that represent the three oscillators being sent through two separate signal paths. Out of the amp, your signal is sent to the filter 3 section, where you have those four filter types to choose from. Notice that this section is a different color, signifying that the controls in this section work together. Following the signal out of filter 3, you can add chorus and delay. I will cover the global envelope and LFO2 section in just a moment. Okay, so now that we have the signal flow knocked out, let's look at the other sections of Thor. I'm not going to go too in-depth as to what all these sections mean, but just generalize their functions. First, you have your LFO1 and filter envelope section. The LFO1 is a very low frequency signal that adds a rhythmic pulse to your sound. Here, you can set the rate of the pulse, sync it with your tempo, and select what type of waveform it should pulse as. The filter envelope is a way to further shape your sound. A very common example of an envelope filter is an auto wah. The mod envelope is a way to adjust the characteristics of your signal, such as the pitch of your oscillator. The amp envelope is a way to shape characteristics of the amp. Last, you have your global envelope to apply to the entire signal and another LFO to use. If that wasn't already enough to comprehend, we still have the matrix to go through. Simply put, here, you can assign parts of the oscillators, filters, LFOs, and envelopes to control other parts of the oscillators, filters, LFOs, and envelopes. Future tutorials will illustrate this. But you can open up any preset and look at the matrix to get an idea. Below the matrix is a pattern sequencer. Here, you can make rhythmic appraisios and such. Now, let's tab around to the back. As you could expect, there are a whole host of CV in and outputs. The two most important parts about the back of Thor 
are the audio in and outputs and the routing examples on the programmer. First, you can send four audio signals out. Also note that you can accept four audio inputs. This means you can literally plug anything into Thor to use all those super rad controls we just covered. I encourage you to read the routing examples quite a few times and experiment with them. This is how I learned the concept of the matrix and ways it can be used to influence your sound. Thor is a super powerful device. Not only can it be used for sound synthesis, but it can be used as a way to further manipulate guitar, vocals, or any other instrument you think you can connect to. You could even connect another Thor. Check out my other tutorials where I put this powerful device to work. And don't forget to subscribe.